name is Rabina Abdul Hussain. I was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2000. My name's Christine. I was diagnosed with an anal carcinoma in October 2012. My name is Jean and I was diagnosed in September 1992 with breast cancer. So it's 23 years that I've been dealing with breast cancer. Most of the time I'm on chemo, but then I like to take little breaks and go on holidays. The highlight of Machu Picchu, to be able to climb that after having had, you know, spinal surgery and being on chemo, I didn't think I'd be able to climb it. It was an amazing feeling and I'd never thought I'd get there, to tell you the truth, after, you know, being on chemo and all that. While I'm here, actually support Ben, my eldest son. He plays the baritone with Black Dyke Brass Band. So I am cancer free, um, but still struggling with the side effects, the uh, radiotherapy burning really, because the scar tissue now is what's causing the, the pain and discomfort. Uh, that I'm going through now and have been for the last two years. We're here at Chadderton Town Hall um, and this is where I line dance every Thursday with Oldham Renegades. It's been a fantastic, absolutely fantastic source of comfort to me because you make friends, we go away on holidays and it's the friendship. Uh, you meet the same people, you learn new dances every week, it's fun and that's what it's all about. I was in remission for about eight years. After eight years, um, I started getting severe back pain and I was diagnosed with tumours in my spine. The cancer had spread into my liver and I, that I'd have to go back on chemo again. So five years ago, my chemo journey started again and I have been on chemo since then. <laughs> you look beautiful on the film, don't worry. I do, I oh, thank you. <laughs> Are they filming my best side? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I see you've got no pet, not saying anything. <laughs> Come lipstick on today, yes. <laughs> well, that was before I knew. <laughs> <laughs> they said that it was going to be an ongoing thing, um, that I would take tamoxifen for at least five years, and then they would reconsider. I'd had the operation. Um, I was put on a drug. And at that time, it was a fairly new drug, but they thought it was going to be effective. It has been effective, and they still use it. I'm still having treatment. Um, I'm on a new drug now, which I was put on in 2014, and it's keeping it under control. As far as support is concerned for, for the other half of a cancer sufferer, that can be tricky as well. I was going to visit Christine. Well, well she was in the Christine. There's a, there's a lady in the lift with me and uh, she told me something her husband had said and it stuck with me because he, he sort of said I've got the easy part, I've got to get better what you've got to do is, is keep everything together while, while that happens Mosque here, this mosque's uh, name is Nur Masjid it's in Levensium and uh, it services the local Dawdi Bora Muslim community of which we are a part Most people in this community know me most of the time I am here and it sort of, I think it gives me a sense of belonging and I come here and it gives me an inspiration. It gives you sort of community to come to so you're not always fighting on your own. And one of the side effects, what, and it's vanity more than anything, you lose your hair. But most of the other side effects are not like sickness and all that kind of thing that you, because the meds usually contract that so it's not too bad but one of the side effects as the treatment goes on is numbness you know of your fingers so and the feet sort of lose their um, you can't feel things on the feet so you you have to be more careful as you're coming down the stairs and things like that and the most irritating thing is you know like trying to open a bottle uh, it sounds really simple how can people not open a bottle but you just can't do it I think the worst one, a feeling of, of depression really, um, because um, you just don't know how um, things are going to work out. 
But again, you know, you have to think yourself lucky. Every day when I wake up, I think I'm here, I'm, I'm living and I'm a survivor. Uh, that's the way I look at it. So palliative care is a specialty that helps support people through their cancer treatment and also beyond their cancer treatment. The focus of palliative care is actually to help with patients who have problems with pain or problems with difficult symptoms and also practical support and advice. So it's a whole range of patients who are seen in our pain and symptom control clinic. Many patients are undergoing active cancer treatment and many patients have finished their cancer treatment and we're supporting them. The alternative therapies which I'm trying at the moment, um, acupuncture is one of the things that I'm trying at the moment and I'm going to be having hypnotherapy also to try and block the sensations that I'm going through with the pain. Acupuncture is often cumulative in how it works for long-term type things as it's releasing different chemistries from the body and that's a really positive thing for a lot of the patients we get a lot of feedback it's very good for fatigue we did a study on that it's very good for it would seem that people respond really well for um, nausea so it's about feedback for you and me isn't it really it is. Right, so we're setting off. Yeah, so yeah. it's left, right, turn and turn. Right, left, turn and turn. Well, my father was diagnosed with cancer in 1989. I helped him through that. Um, and he actually passed away in our hospice in 1991. My brother, um, he had um, a lung removed. He was perfectly all right for years. And then in 1995, it came back, that was it. One of my sisters, I had twin sisters, and one of them, she had um, cancer of the throat, and the other twin sister to her had died in a St Anne's hospice uh, in 2006. My husband was diagnosed in ca with cancer in 2000, and he died in 2001. I nursed him at home myself. But to me, that, again, it was the therapy because you don't have time to think about yourself. You're nursing other people, you're helping them through. Get yourself out there in the world. Do voluntary, help other people. I do the hospice, I go there every week, um, help with anything I can, and it's part and parcel of living. Da, 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 da. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> Can't do it without the music. <laughs> Shall we start again? We got Misty as a puppy um, about, a, I was a year into my cancer treatment. And I did set this goal to myself that I would walk the dog because I'd been used to walking the dog previously with our other dogs. It was a hard one, I have to say. I had got times where I only walked around the cul-de-sac and it was just too much. And then I managed to get to the end of the street Next time we'll go just that bit further and tick that one off the list. And then I did manage to get onto the moor walk and, uh, and it was so beautiful to see the scenery again and have the wind in your face. And you forget while you're going through treatment and you're stuck in your four walls of home or hospital or wherever, you do forget that those sceneries are out there. I'm letting what will be will be at the moment next six months will tell whether uh, you know I will recover from this now or not and if I do recover then I will put plan things forward and go on other journeys but at the moment I've put everything on hold just to have this treatment. I thought that mine had returned in uh, January 2014. They did um, some tests and confirmed that yes they thought they'd had done uh, and I just left it with them because I knew I was in their hands. I knew what was happening to my body, but I needed it to be confirmed and for them to sort it. My little girl was only three years old when I first was diagnosed cancer. And at that time, the doctor had given me eight years to live. 
and I know I'm getting emotional, but I never thought I'd see her growing up. But now she's 18 and it's such a wonderful feeling to see that I've been there as a part of her growing up. There are lots and lots and lots of improvements. They're finding new treatments every single day. You just have to believe in your doctor and think, I'm, I'm a survivor, this is it. You're gonna survive. You're not going to go under, you're going to survive.